What's going on, everybody? Woo, it's hot today. It's 98 degrees right now with a heat index of like 200. So we have had way too much rain and the lakes are just flooded. Lake Grapevine the other day was seven foot up. I heard of one of these lakes was over 10 foot high. That's terrible and good thing at the same time. I like it flushing out the lakes and the rivers and getting everything cleaned up, but man, it makes it rough on us fishermen. Also, with the lakes high, our good boats, boat ramps are uh, all out of business. Like they shut them all down. So, guys, it's late. It's 5.30 or after 5.30. It's hot. I got my sun hat over there. But we're going to fish till dark. See what we can put in the boat. Guys, I appreciate you watching the videos. I really, really do. Summer's a real slow time for YouTube content creators. We don't get a lot of... A lot of traffic through the summertime. Everybody's out doing their thing. They're not watching YouTube. So every one of you guys that stopped to watch this, I appreciate it. One other thing I'd like to ask for you is uh, YouTube changed its algorithm due to a lot of cheaters, guys that are gaming the system. So a lot of things that used to help us don't help us anymore. But one of the things that helps us a lot is YouTube knowing that viewers have satisfaction watching a video. Viewer satisfaction is judged based on like the thumbs up and also viewer duration. So the longer you watch the videos, the more it helps out the content creators that you like, not just me, but everybody you watch. All the guys I watch, I try to hang in there. I tough out the ads and give them as much time as I can afford to give them because I know it helps them out and I enjoy their content. Another thing is just a thumbs up. You can leave a comment on a video, but it could be a negative comment. So YouTube doesn't really judge that as being positive feedback or viewer satisfaction just because you comment on the video. Comments help as far as interaction goes, but viewer satisfaction can only be judged by view duration and thumbs up. So I'd appreciate it if you guys would thumbs me up, guys. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the fish. Here's the down. Here's the lake nips. All right, guys. So what we're looking for today, and the reason that I was willing to go that far from the boat ramp to fish, even this late at night, is you can't see it because the lake's high. We're sitting on a shelf right here. If you look at this right here, it's this ridge. See that line? All this blue and all this white. There's a drop off right there, like a creek channel or a ledge or a drop. It's not a steep drop, but it's definitely a drop. Got a hump there. And what I do is I fish this timber that's all along this drop, and those fish will be stacking up on that certain times of the year. Look right there in front of me. Oh, guard. Water was clear. I could see him. I could see him coming. So I've been out here when this lake was lower last year, obviously. And this timber all along this shelf holds fish. So it's nice because I don't have to fight it. Another thing today, guys, is uh, this is my first trip out with my Sea Light um, new transducer holder. I sold the All Aboard Marine off of the trolling motor because, well, it, was, it just wasn't my favorite mount. So we're going to use this Sea Light and get this one out here. See how it does. This one's a little bit more hands-on, unfortunately, but it works. All right, back. There it is. There we go. I was fixing to say I can't see nothing. All right. So we got a ghost tree out there. I'm not liking that. Oh wait, no, that's an actual tree. I was thinking that's a ghost tree and it's a real tree. Yeah. All right. You see what I'm talking about? All this timber sitting on this ledge. Got a nice couple trees under the water. We're in 25 foot of water. Fish are suspended between 20 and 10 feet in that tree. 
Looks like there's a good amount of fish, could be small ones. Don't really know till we get down there. Fishing jigs only today, and I'm gonna be using my new ball tails, my pitching jigs for this time of year. I think I wanna match the hatch, but I'm gonna go a little darker, and I'm gonna go with ghost minnow. Check these new ball tails out from my new box. They have a wide back on them. They have a ball tail, but it's a flat, like a ping pong paddle. This will catch a lot of water as it's falling. It's gonna catch a lot of water and give you a lot of action coming down. So I can pitch this out and it's gonna swim back to me. It's gonna be a great bait. It's about a two and a half, two and a quarter to two and a half inch bait. A good broad tail, but it's really skinny. Um, just great for catching water and having movement. So this is what I wanna run for summertime because I wanna pitch it out there. I don't want to run run a bunch of color because color is insignificant. Color is absolutely insignificant. And I'm going to show you this. This bait doesn't have any color. It's clear, white fleck, a little bit of hologram fleck, light gray top, white head with a little bit of chartreuse and some and some orange eyes. But that's so insignificant in, in, the, in the grand scheme of things. <clears throat> Fishing for crappie, especially in the summertime, is gonna be much more about presentation than it is about color. Color does not matter. If you look at a, <clears throat> if you look at a depth color chart for uh, what, what your eyes can see under the water, you start losing certain colors at certain depths. And I think red's the first one to go. I think you lose red at about five feet deep. So um, that's our bait profile right there. We got the solid body that's gonna stay solid. The, the head of the bait is going to block out any light coming down from the surface. The body's partly translucent. That's going to let some light shine through. It's going to fool them into seeing the light bend around the bait. They're not going to understand what it is, but they're going to know that it's a profile of a bait fish. Because the tail is so skinny, it's kind of like the bait's really only about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter long. But this tail is going to give enough action to really draw in that lateral line, you know, bite. So what we'll do is we'll drop and pitch this both because you're able to do that with the design of the bait. I really love it. If you guys want some of these, I think I have about 14 boxes left right now in stock. Just give me a call, uh, send me a message and I'll shoot you one out. All right guys, now here's another little trick. If you got live scope, especially. One, one thing that we do with live scope is I put a, an eighth ounce split shot about I don't know 14 inches 12 to 14 inches above the head of my jig and crimp it on uh, two things this gets the jig down faster it also um, gives me two profiles on my live scope screen I can I can see I can see better on the screen where my jig is when I've got two profiles going up and down as I move it so we know where the baits where the fish are on here and we got our we got our jig and rig set up here all we got to do now is figure out where we are all right now here's the problem my boat swung around so i gotta be careful yeah the, there's possibly some bigger fish down there right there i'm drifting across them right now got him got one first drop first drop little guy got him right off the top typically catch the i typically catch my crappie my bigger crappie lower on the tree but i just happened to get that guy right off the top first drop so my ball tail's killing it no color first drop no issues okay we're gonna come out here to the outside edge because i think there's some fish out here there we go we got one coming up after it got one. Oh, i let him hit it and didn't get him i'm kind of worried though that's worrying me the way they came after it is more like small ones and i don't want to catch a small one if i can help it got one fish on oh that was crazy had some line twist oh big big fish big fish all right that's a nice one nice nice crappie when you have the opportunity to see what you're doing you want to fish the edges of the tree because if you pull a fish off the edge of the tree you're less likely to scare the rest of them and you can have more opportunities at the 
at the fish stacked up on this timber. If you go in there right in the middle of the tree and start pulling fish out, it's not going to be long before, you know, before you've scared them all and you're not going to get bites, especially on jigs in the summertime. Sometimes you just have to reflect on what your business is. You look at it like, all right, I lost a couple fish, but why did I lose those fish? The reason I think I lost those fish, and this is my opinion, is I didn't bend out my hook gap. If you don't bend out your hook gap, you're not gonna get a roof of the mouth hook set. The money tree right there, guys, that's what you call a money tree. Maybe all dollar dollar bills, but it's money. That's a money tree. Let's go see. Let's go see if it's all dollar bills or if it's ten dollar bills or hundred dollar bills. I think it's probably dollar bills. Too many of them. Wham! Let's see. Huh? Not too bad. First fish off the tree. Not too bad. Still think it's dollar bills though. It's dollar bills. No pup dog. I'm keeping pup dogs. Man, we gotta find them monsters. Where the monsters at? This thing kicked me plumb off the tree, which I don't want to be. Get over there. Stop trying to lock up wherever you think and do what I tell you. You gotta tell your spot lock what to do sometimes. It's just, he just has to be told. Boom. Right there. They're hitting the split shot. That's why sometimes you'll pick up on it and you ain't got nothing. Oh, I did have a good hit that time. Had a good one that time. Dad gum spot lock. Taking me off my good tree. Put me back, put me back. Get down in there with them. Got one. Still doesn't feel like a much more than a pup dog. That's a pup dog. That's a black crappie pup dog. At least we got a mix in there. Let's get in there. I bet there's something better in there. Hey, they're fi they'll fight over that food. You get it, you get it down in there with them, and they know it ain't real or they ain't sure what it is, but they don't want anyone else to get it, so they'll take it. There you go. That's a better fish. That's a better fish right there. Oh yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. See, you never know what's down there. You never know what's down there. That's a solid, solid, solid. 12 and a half, maybe a little bit bigger, maybe. That's a solid fish right there. Not a giant, just a solid money fish. Let's put money in the bank right there. Deposit. I think that one's a decent fish. Feels like it. Let me horse him out. Yeah, he's a good one. Black crop. Yeah. That one was heavy on this 12 foot rod. Not that giant of a fish. He's fighting. Fought like he didn't want to get caught for sure. He's saying that. Eh. I don't want no part of going in there. That's a fish. He was hung in the tree. Had to wait for a second. Get out. Just an old pup dog. Did I bend that hook point out? Nope. Oh. You gotta bend the hook point out, guys. You can't be dumb about it. You gotta do it. If you don't do it, you're gonna lose fish. Especially big ones. Don't have to bend it out much. Just enough. Just enough. Guys, when you come out here with your live scope units, this is what you want to look for. This creek channel right here. It's a creek channel running into a cove. You can see what it looks like over there. It's like right here. If you get on the edge of that creek channel where that drop off is, there's going to be stumps and trees all along the top. Because originally this lake wasn't a lake, it was some creeks. Well, they flooded them. And that timber's still sitting there. 
and those fish use these creek channels like a highway and they stop and pull up on these banks on the timber and structure now there's so much timber out here that there's not fish on everything that's the problem a lot of times you're looking for this timber but the problem is you can find too much of it so what we want to do is we want to isolate just the timber that could potentially have fish on it or we need to get closer to the mouth of the cove because that's really where the fish are going to set up they're not going to be out here in the lake they're going to be more closer to you know the mouth of that cove especially if it's deep and the reason for that is is because the bait fish are going to hang out in that cove still being deep enough water the dissolved oxygen content's really high for them the water temperature sustained regardless of the heat of the day and they have a food source so we we'll get into that creek channel and then head up it. Oh yeah, got something. Something nice. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. He choked it down too. Man, these little guys are, he's keeper, but they're, they're getting after it now. I mean, they're serious. Like they're super serious about eating right now. There's fish in there, but I ain't ever getting them out. There ain't no way I'm getting those fish out of there. They are so far in there. That's just not even possible. What in the world? Let me see where this even is. Let's try. Or am I coming down? Oh yeah, no, they're they're around the trunk. All were gathered up around that trunk. Got protection for days. Look at the school though. That's a nice looking group of fish. I think I'm gonna try for them from the backside. Okay, all I can really do is try to drop in there and not get hung up. That's gonna be, hey 